Hello and welcome to Wisdom Bites. Hope you're well. Thank you once again for joining us. Very much appreciated. And in today's video, I'm going to be looking at the current screen, as you can see here, and why the next two weeks are going to be absolutely critical, especially as per the title of the video, this Wednesday, when we have the FOMC meeting to decide the interest rates going forward. I'm also going to be looking at the 60-day cycle to show exactly where we are and where we're heading in the short term and the medium term. And if I have any time, I'll go through one of the charts for the altcoins and show you that what the charts are saying are quite different to what the news might be telling you. So if that sounds interesting, without further ado, get yourself a cup of tea, sit yourself down, eyes on the screen, and let's get cracking. Before we begin, the usual polite reminder, please remember everything in my videos is just for educational purposes, so please always do your wider research before you make any investment decisions. So with that out of the way, I'm going to just look at the current chart here, and these are the two levels that I've been mentioning for the last few months, ever since we got above this level here at the 25,200 level. So we broke through this 25,200 level back in March, and since then, we've gone to this level at 31 and come back and retesting this level again. This level is absolutely critical now. And what happens on Tuesday and Wednesday, i.e. tomorrow, is the CPI data, which will then determine the decision on the interest rates by the FOMC on Wednesday. So what happens tomorrow and Wednesday will be absolutely critical to how the Bitcoin price moves forward in the next few weeks and months. As I mentioned in the last week's video, at this point where we are now, Above this level, we are still bullish, and below this point, we are bearish. On this channel, we always remain neutral and let the price action dictate our narrative. And currently, as long as we hold this 25.2, we are bullish that this is going to be a very strong support level. And the reason for that, and the many people ask me, that when I show the simple moving averages and the horizontal support lines, which of the two is more prominent in terms of the importance of that order. So when I show these moving averages, this is the 50 moving average, the yellow is the 21 and the green is the very important 200 simple moving average. Yesterday we broke through the actual 200 simple moving average but just managed to be hovering above the 21 simple moving average. Some would say it actually broke through, probably it did, but the current weekly candle has now started below the 21 of course. So this is obviously very important and we need to always be mindful of this. But the 50 as well here is turning back up again, which tells us that the overall bigger picture, as we're seeing here, is that the market is slowly, like a big tanker, is now slowly turning around back to the upside. And this is what the 50 simple moving average is telling us. But how do those weekly averages compare in terms of the importance. The way I rank these in importance of order is that the horizontal support and resistance is far more important. So you can lose the 200, you can lose the 50 and the 21, but the more important level to look at is the horizontal support and resistance. So even if you lose the 200 and the 21 and we come to the horizontal, that would be the actual key. So always bear that in mind. And this is why I'm saying that this is very critical that we're right at the juncture of the 25.2 and we basically need to make up our minds this week whether we're going to go to the upside or the downside. And the FOMC meeting on Wednesday will determine to a great part what happens to Bitcoin. Just staying with this chart, as we've said many times before, we've got the inverse head and shoulders here. Currently, we're also forming another very strong classical charting pattern called the cup and handle pattern here. So you've got this cup that's formed as part of the inverse head and shoulders, but as this retreat that we've had since the 31,000 over here, we've also now formed the handle here. And this is obviously a very bullish pattern. And if we have a look at the Bolkowski on the cup and handle pattern, we see that the overall performance rank, three out of 39 patterns. So this is so important that it's the, actually in the top three of the important results that we get with this pattern. The average rise we get with this pattern is about 54%, and these percentages are based on 913 perfect trades. So this is a very important background. And if this is going to meet the classical pattern trading targets, take the measurement from the inverse head and shoulders 
neckline, which is at 25.2. And that gives us about a 60% rise from here. And that will take us all the way up to the $40,000 mark. So this is our first target over here as per this pattern, the cup and handle, as well as the inverse head and shoulders. And that would fit in with the average rise you would expect with this pattern of about 54%. So anywhere around the 54% as the average. So it could be obviously 60, 65% or a little bit lower than that. However, as we've been seeing over the last many months, if you've been watching my videos, you'll know that my two big targets for this year before the halving next April in 2024, the big two targets are 40,000 and 50,000. And so everything seems to point to those two directions still. Okay, moving on to the 60 day cycle, where currently, if we're gonna measure it from this point here after the 45 day low, we're currently now on day 48. So it's now bringing us into the realms of this box here, which is around 10 days either side of the 60 day cycle. So obviously we're flexible here, either side, 10, 15 days, whatever it's going to be, around about here, we're getting more and more closer into this box where there's going to be some sort of resolution. And could Wednesday's meeting of the FOMC provide that resolution? Only time will tell, but at least we know the background of this particular chart, that this is where we're coming into now. We're coming towards the last phase of the 60 day cycle, where we would expect a resolution to the upside or the downside. And I have to say, so far, we are holding quite well around these levels here. We've had many opportunities to go to the downside, and it may well still be the case, but it looks to me as though it's holding up much more stronger than people would expect, considering that we're in the final phases of the end of the cycle here. And what that really tells me is that the dumb money here, whenever people sell around here, every time the market goes down, people start selling all these points here. But because it's holding up strongly at these levels here, it tells you that the smart money is moving in virtually straight away. So a red candle is followed very quickly by a big green candle. So there's a lot of buying going on here. So what's happening is that the selling pressure is being absorbed by the bigger buying that's been going on by the whales here. And the environment is such that we are now at the beginning of the next two to three years of the bull phase of this market. One thing to bear in mind here and to keep an eye on is that should we carry on going sideways here into this 60 day cycle part of the cycle here, then what's that really telling us is that if we don't get this capitulation down here, which is quite easily still able to be done, especially if something goes wrong on the Wednesday and we get something unexpected by the FOMC, then that sideways movement would be in the background of a lot of negative noise going on with the BNB as well as the Coinbase. So if the Bitcoin keeps going sideways in the background of all that, well, that really is, I would say, a very bullish development. And what we would do is that we could expect a very big move to the upside over here. So we could get an explosive move a little bit like over here when we were going sideways. And if you go back to what I was commenting at this time here, the market was expecting this market to go much, much lower into this cycle here at the end of the 60 days. But we actually bottomed out on 51 days. And I said at this juncture here, that if we don't have a capitulation, but keep going sideways, we could expect a big move to the upside, which is exactly what we got here. And this part of the 60 day cycle now is resembling quite a lot of what's happened over here. So just keep an eye on that. If we do go sideways, yes, we can still capitulate. It all depends on what happens on Wednesday and maybe other things. But this is how I'm seeing the developments over here now. And it really is all about opinions. And I'm only sharing what I'm understanding and what I'm seeing here. And obviously I could be quite wrong here, but I can only interpret what I see. And just looking at the altcoins with the, all the background noise that's going on with the SEC talking about the Binance and making certain charges against them. So while everybody's panicking on the Binance coin, the BNB, which is the actual central focal point of this SEC charges, mm -hmm. all you have to do is look at the charts and it's giving you a slightly different picture here. So on this chart, on the weekly time frame, just to give you the overall bigger picture, currently we're making higher lows over here. So that's not bearish in any way at all. Secondly, the 200 simple moving average, Look where we've just found support, right on the 200 simple moving average. So again, this is not very bearish as you would suggest with what's going on in the background. So what you've got now here is a symmetrical triangle where it's going to have to break sooner or later from this 
pattern here. And while this would be a bearish pattern because we're coming from the upside here, i.e. we're coming into this chart in a bearish way, which means that it could be a continuation pattern. So always be careful about the noise going on in the media. What it does is it actually sometimes doesn't reflect totally what's going on in the charts. And I would be more inclined to believe the charts than the actual noise in the background. Having said that, if you look at Cardano, that's been affected very badly. And this is really in a bit of a free fall. It's lost the 200 simple moving average. It's lost the 50 and the 20. And the thing is that we have actually found support at these levels here. But, but certainly Cardano has been affected much more than BNB. And as I showed you this chart for the Bitcoin dominance just last week, we were coming up to this neckline here. And this is one of the reasons why I was saying that if Bitcoin breaks out from here, the altcoins are really going to go into a bit of a free fall. So obviously we're now just rearing our head above this level here. How far that will go, we don't know. But certainly this sideways movement was giving me cause for concern for the altcoins, as I mentioned in the last week's video, that when you have at this critical level, we're not getting rejected here like we did over here and over here and over here. This is not the same anymore, which means that it's holding up very, very strongly and people are prepared to pay the higher price because they feel it's going to go up. And usually in classical charting, when we come and retest this about four or five times, then that is the point where we actually normally break out. So there's a higher degree of probability that this is going to break out to the upside now. And is one of the main reasons why I would actually prefer to go into the Bitcoin miners rather than hold altcoins. With the Bitcoin miners, you have about 20 companies which are directly related to Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin goes up, the Bitcoin miners go up. And if Bitcoin comes down, the Bitcoin miners come down. Whereas with the altcoins, there is the inverse relationship sometimes. And this is where this Bitcoin dominance comes in. So as Bitcoin is going to go up, the altcoins are obviously in relative to that are going to be going down. And it's my opinion that in the last cycle, the altcoins didn't do very well compared to Bitcoin. And this tells me that maybe one more time, if you look at the charts, it's telling us that the altcoins, again, won't do as well as expected. Obviously, they'll do well against the USD dollar and they may go up two or three or four times. But if you compare that to the Bitcoin miners, they have a leverage play, a special leverage play in terms of they mine the Bitcoins at a certain low price. And as Bitcoin goes up, they have an exponential growth that goes along with it. And this is one of the reasons why we have the Bitcoin Miners Club. And we do the Bitcoin Miners technical analysis on those smaller groups of companies around about between five and eight companies that we're looking at currently, where we do the technical analysis and look at those which are undervalued. And this Wednesday, I will be covering a special company which I featured only about five or six weeks ago. And since then, that company has gone up by 30%. But in that period of time, its Bitcoin production has actually gone up by 300%. So just imagine if Bitcoin goes up to 50, 60,000, those extra Bitcoins that they've produced are obviously produced at a much lower price. And as the price goes up, this company should have, just like the, all the other Bitcoin miners, an exponential growth against it. And with this kind of production of Bitcoins increasing at that rate, then obviously it's going to do much better than some of the other Bitcoin miners. So I'm going to be having a look at this particular company on Wednesday. And if you want to become a member and get access to the full library of all the companies and their technical analysis that we've done over the last few months, then all you have to do is click on the join button here below any of my videos. And when you do, you get this box in the middle here. The cost is just $4.99 and you don't have to have a contract or anything like that. You can actually cancel at any time, hassle free. Nobody's going to ask you any questions, but you will get access to all the Bitcoin miners technical analysis that we've done going forward as well, because when we come to the halving next year, that is when the actual leverage play really come into its own, because that's when the Bitcoin price is expected to go by six or seven times. So according to the recent history, if you look at the last cycle, the Bitcoin miners went up by an exponential growth of around about 10 times the price of Bitcoin. So like here, up to this level here in March 2021, Marathon had gone up by 16 times, eventually went up by 24 times, just within that year there from the COVID situation. Whereas Bitcoin in between those periods of time went up by six times. The reason for following the Bitcoin miners is that you've now got between now and April next year, 
to get yourself familiar with some of these Bitcoin miners so that by the time we get to the halving next April, we will know which of the Bitcoin miners are the most likely to outperform from next April onwards in the parabolic phase of the Bitcoin cycle going forward. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there. I hope you found value in the video. If you did, then please do remember to like and to subscribe and to turn on the notification bell. And if you have any comments, questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Until the next time, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.